Hello, Veteran0121 here. Welcome back, and we are let's playing Tales of Fantasia. In the last episode, we acquired a new party member named Arch. She is a mage and a health and a um, half elf, so she's gonna be. Whoa, I wanna become a great mage, so I've been taking magic lessons. Then I'll get to go on a wonderful adventure with an amazing hero. Wow, that was weird. But yeah, as you can see, we have a new party member. She is a mage. She uh, doesn't know too many spells right now, though. I already talked to all those villagers. You know, somehow I get the feeling that there's like a freaking secret passage to the back part of that store. I don't know why I keep thinking that. Whatever. No, uh, yeah, that's a kid that can beat up all the monsters, apparently. Hello, Elder. Yes, we did. Oh, that girl looks like a mage. Here, give her the spell book. I haven't used it in ages. And Arch learns the Cyclone spell. Very nice. Anybody else want to teach some magic? So yeah, now I'm going to be uh, visiting a lot of previous locations, seeing if I can find spell books and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to look up most of this stuff because, uh, yeah, I don't want to miss anything. Alright, back in the village of Euclid. This is where Clarth lives, or lived, or something like that. Lived, lives, whatever. Yeah, let's look around. Four Great Spirits and Maxwell? You mean like Maxwell Smart? Hmm. <laughs> Secret stash. Okay. There's the Moria mine in the kingdom of Alvanista. Alvanista. Unused rings that have yet to be discovered may exist in the dwarven ruins there. Why don't you look into that? Yeah, I think we might be looking into that very thing when we actually go to Alvanista. Remnants of a, yeah, a Moria Mines Dwarven? That can't just be a coincidence. That's obviously a reference to Lord of the Rings. It's gotta be. <laughs> it, it really does. It has to be a reference to Lord of the Rings. Dwarf named Aegis? Hmm. Yeah, but there are also spirits of things like stars, moons, darkness, and light existing in the spirit world. So yeah, it's not just, you know, wind and cold and fire in this game. It's actually other stuff. Kind of like in, uh, Saiken Densetsu. So, Gnome of Earth, Undine of Water, Ifrit of Fire, and Sof of Wind. In addition, their leader is known as Maxwell, the spirit of molecules? Huh. Others include Luna, the spirit of moon, shadow, the spirit of darkness, and Aska, spirit of light. 
It's also thought that there has that there are other spirits whose existence has yet to be confirmed. Very interesting indeedy. A children's picture book? Who is this? Alright, and Arch learned the Ice Tornado spell. How about that, huh? I think there was another one in here somewhere, right? Alright, and she learned Stone Blast. I believe there's a few other spells we can learn in the, uh, the village of... Ooh, she's got the title of Witch. Alright. I believe there's a couple more spells we can get in the uh, Kingdom of Venezia. <laughs> oh, you're gonna give us something. Another channeling ring? Okay, well I don't need another one, but thanks. <laughs> I really don't need another one. But uh, anyways, let's look at Arch's spells. Stone Blast, which uh, medium-sized rocks rain down upon the enemy. That looks pretty damn good. And then Cyclone. Intermediate wind and shroud the enemy in a powerful tornado. Yeah, this is probably going to fucking whoop some major ass. I'm not going to lie. So, I think that's it. Alright, back in the village of Venestia, or Venezia, or whatever it's called. Yeah, what we want to do is we want to go up here to this uh, thing that's kind of by the... Oh wait, no, I'm in the wrong one. I am in the wrong building. My apologies. Yeah, we're going to go in here and talk to this girl. Yeah, we have a, we have a mage now. Yeah, we'll take your lightning spell book for 200 gold. Give Arch some more uh, spells for her amazing repertoire. Yeah. And this one's a thousand. But that's alright, we'll take it. We will definitely take it. Storm unleash a sudden squall at the enemy. Squall? Really? Yeah, novice lightning spell. Tiny bolt of lightning. Big whoopity freaking do. But basically, right now, the strongest spell that uh, that Arch has is the cyclone spell. This spell is amazing, and then ice tornado is pretty goddamn good too. And that's, I believe, all the spells we can get for now. But, uh, yeah, remember that optional cave they were talking about? Well, I think I'm going to be heading there next, actually. Or actually, no, no, no. I'm going to wait to do that, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. We want to go to, um, we want to go back to, uh, to Meter's mansion and get that treasure that we couldn't get before. Yeah, because I don't, I want to get it now so I don't forget about it. Yes, we want to go there again. But yeah, if we can still run into encounters on that, uh, on that island in that castle, you know, those guys that drop rune bottles, that's a pretty good place to farm for them, I would imagine. They're pretty easy to take out, too. So yeah, it shouldn't take us too long to run down to the uh, basement area. Kind of reminds me of uh, you know the same room where you um, 
run into Magus and Chrono Trigger. You know, the little flamey things lighting up as you walk past them. Alright, and in this chest we get a Halberd, which I think is better for quests. It's another spear type weapon. Oh yeah, that's definitely better. Definitely better slash, a little bit better accuracy. And what is this? A Grimoire. Alright, so yeah, now I know I can get rune bottles easy enough, so yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of customizing in between episodes, because a lot of times uh, there's like a sequence of transformation uh, possibilities with different items in this game. The Liber Ivonis. That is a new weapon for Clarth. Oh wow, that's actually really good attack power. Well, for Clarth anyways, I, I, I guess it's good attack power. But, uh, yeah, now that we've, uh, now that I know I can get freaking rune bottles from enemy drops, well, a lot of times you can transform items and you can, there's basically like a cycle of different items you can transform them to. Kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's hard for me to explain. Let's say... Uh, you transform this aquamarine into another item, and then transform it into transform that into another item, then transform it into another item, and then transform it into another item. There's a possibility you could actually end up with what you started with. Uh, so a lot of times it's good to find the items that you need and just kind of I don't know, just experiment with rune bottles. I mean, if you have to save your game beforehand to see what you can transform an item into. Uh, do so that way you're not you know wasting your rune bottles and, and the uh, the items that you're buying and stuff like that and that's what I've noticed with this game is uh, yeah you can you can customize a lot of items and transform them into different stuff uh, with rune bottles which is really cool oh that's much better attack power and yeah that cyclone is amazingly powerful as you just saw. So yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing some screwing around for a little bit here. All right, about to show off something here. Uh, get that ranged a little bit better. Now with rune bottles here, you can actually transform uh, what is it? Capes into uh, flare capes. Which uh, what does a flare cape do? A, ca a red cape with fire crest invalidates fire and earth elemental damage 30% of the time. So uh, this is actually pretty good for when you're facing enemies that use a lot of fire and earth attacks. And then if you use a rune bottle on a leather cape, you can make an aqua cape, which uh, invalidates water and wind elemental damage 30% of the time, uh, which is also good. Now if you used another rune bottle on both of these items here, a flare cape would become an aqua cape and vice versa so I recommend just buying a cape and a leather cape and then using one rune bottle to transform uh, each which is exactly what I'm gonna do so now if I want elemental protection on all my characters I have four of each and I can use them for elemental protection so yeah, I'm gonna go farm for some more, some uh, some more rune bottles. That way, I can transform some of these uh, stat gain items as well. And uh, I think apple gel becomes orange gel, orange gel becomes Milan's gel. I think that's how it works, anyways. But yeah, whatever. I'm gonna be doing a lot more screwing around with accessories and rune bottles and stuff. All right, farmed for a few rune bottles, like seven. So what I'm gonna do now is show off what um what verbenas change into turns into red verbena and these uh, increase agility by two lavenders uh, turn into red lavenders which increase strength by two savories uh, increase max TP by five percent but if we uh, if we uh, synthesize those or use rune bottles on them they turn into red savories uh, yeah you can't you can't do it again. You can't use another rune bottle on those. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade all these uh, thingies. Oh yeah, if you uh, if you upgrade a Milan's gel, it'll actually turn into a Miracle gel, which will restore 60% of max HP and TP, which is pretty freaking good actually. So I'm thinking about uh, you know 
using room bottles on those eventually. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and do that. And then, as far as using these, uh, yeah, these increase max HP by 10%. Uh, I'm just going to use him on Quest because he's probably the most important character out of all the characters, seeing as he's, like, the one running around and on the front lines and all that stuff. So I'm going to give him the Quest. And, uh, yeah. I'm just going to give him the Quest. Now, keep in mind, uh, this raises your max TP by and max HP. Or ba basically, the ones that... Uh, raise their HP and TP are done by a percentage so it might actually be more beneficial to level up a little bit until you have a higher HP and TP total and then use these items <laughs> in fact I'm gonna do that with the uh, red savories I think uh, but yeah for these items right here the red verbana and the red lavender it really probably doesn't matter so I'm just gonna go ahead and use those items so um yeah, I'm going to save the red savories for later on. One room bottle left. Well, I suppose I could show off one thing here. Uh, yeah, if we uh, synthesize this uh, protect ring, it'll make a force ring, which I believe... Let's see, let me check it out. Re-engraved with a war god's image and validates physical damage 20% of the time. So yeah, it's definitely better than uh, what the protect ring was originally. If you use another rune bottle on this force ring here, it will upgrade into an element uh, reflect ring, I think, which uh, nullifies all types of elemental damage up to 20%. So I, I think I'm actually going to make one of those for Kles. Because right now he has a technical ring, which I absolutely, po well, I, I don't absolutely positively have to have equipped. But being able to manually control him in battle is pretty freaking essential, in my opinion, for his effectiveness. So if I really need elemental protection, then I'll equip that instead of jet boots. But this is probably what I'm going to go with for the most part until I really find something better. Because, yeah, the technical ring makes it so... Uh, Kles can do manual instead of auto or semi-auto. And I want to be able to control Kles because that's obviously a good thing. But for the other characters, it really doesn't matter. And that's why I have aqua capes and flare capes equipped on them for now. Until I can find, until, you know, until I find something better. You know, a better combination or whatever fits the best situation that I'm in. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is just farm for a few more rune bottles, make a few more items and stuff, and go from there. Alright, I think I'm done screwing around for now. Got some more rune bottles leveled up a little bit. I did uh, upgrade some items like that Holy Charm uh, upgrades to a Miracle Charm, which uh, gives you a 50% discount at shops. And then those Hourglasses upgrade to Chronos Hourglass, which is um, an upgraded version of that, basically. And then I went ahead and I... Uh, I upgraded a whole bunch of Milan's gels into Miracle gels, which uh, should be pretty good. And as far as apple gels and orange gels, I don't really even care. Um, uh, yeah, and then all the other stuff I uh, can't really do anything with. Well, I, I could turn a force ring into um, a reflect ring, but you know what? I, I'm I got plenty of other elemental protection like. Uh, these packed rings or whatever, this opal ring, aquamarine, and ruby rings. So yeah, I don't really need more elemental protection. So uh, that's fine. I'll just keep it the force ring in case I really, really, really need physical damage reduction. But yeah, whatever. And then I bought a orb of white mist, which allows you to escape from battles by 30%. Well, you can upgrade this with a rune bottle to uh, make a... Orb of Magical Mist, which allows you to uh, escape uh, battle faster by 50%, so that's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty much it, actually. I, I didn't really do anything else other than just fight around and uh, get arts. Did Master uh, Lightning Tiger Blade, Swallow Dance, and Demon Fang. Still working on Sword Rain Alpha and Tiger Blade, and then I also uh, leveled up enough to learn a new art called Focus, which concentrates your mind to temporarily increase accuracy. So that, I don't know when I'm going to use that, but it might be okay. And then uh, I learned some new spells with Mint, 
Uh, she knows the heal spell, which is an upgraded version of first aid, acid rain, which reduces enemies' defense, and the antidote spell, which cures poison. And uh, nothing new for Clark, Clarth. And then Arch still has her spells. And the only way that Arch learns spells, I think, in this game is by spell books. So I don't think she learns them by leveling up. Oh yeah, and I, I did use those uh, red savories on Quest to boost his technical points, because that's really going to come in handy uh, later on. So, pretty much whenever I get those, unless he's maxed out, uh, I'm going to be giving those red savories to Quest so he can max out his TP, because, like I said before, he needs them the most. His arts take up the most amount of TP, especially... Uh, when you get some of the better ones. And I'm gonna be using them a hell of a lot, so my opinion it's better to just uh, give them the class. Because the other characters, like I said, don't need them as much. So I'm gonna end the episode right here. That's all for this episode of Let's Play Tales of Fantasia. And in the next episode, uh, we're gonna head to uh, Alvinista. We're gonna take the, the boat that we couldn't use before. You know, those guys that were complaining about um, how they were bored or whatever. Basically, this boat over here. Yeah, we're going to talk to this captain and we're going to go to Alvinista in the next episode. I know we can go to a different cave right about now, but you can't really progress without knowing a password. And uh, I'm not going to look up the password and cheat to try and get it early. I'll just try and, you know, do it when we're supposed to do it. So there you go, this is Veteran0121, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.